Okay. Uh, welcome. We're going to kick off. So we're from Stackstorm. We're, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, operations automation and our particular focus and, and some of the use cases and ways people are using Stackstorm. Stackstorm was open sourced uh, yesterday. Uh, it's an Apache license, so please go and grab it. Take a look at stackstorm.com slash community. Uh, I mean, you could be downloading it as you sit there. So don't wait. Grab the bits. At a high level, this is what it is. Now, uh, after I walk through this, we're going to actually demo a particular uh, remediation. But what you're going to see is we're going to be listening to some events. We're going to then take actions based on those events. And those actions are going to include workflow, so long-running actions uh, tied together in a conditional way. Um, sometimes Stackstorm is sort of called the wiring for your Legos, which is okay, a little, a little weird, or if then, then that for the enterprise. Again, events on one side, actions on the other, in between some logic that helps you make those decisions, and then share as code how you want to make those decisions going forward, whether it's CI, CD, pretty common use case these days, or uh, troubleshooting, facilitated troubleshooting, or what we're going to show you again is an example of remediation. I probably should have uh, introduced myself. I'm Evan Powell. I'm one of the co-founders of Stackstorm. We're at booth E2 over there. We're giving out like the best swag in the entire show, so stop by, uh, including beard combs. Come on, beard combs. And uh, so I'm Evan Powell. This is uh, Patrick, and I'm going to hand off to Patrick now. Great, thanks, Evan. All right, let me pull this up here. So the general idea for our demo, let's get this. The general idea for our demo is that an event comes in from a monitoring system, we'll say Sensu, and that particular event uh, is indicating that there is an issue with a piece of hardware on a compute node. Okay, So we have a rule within our system that's going to go ahead and match against that particular event that's coming into the system, and it's going to fire off a workflow that evacuates all of the instances off of the compute node and takes care of the remediation for you. Basically taken straight from the OpenStack troubleshooting guide. Um, you can see here that we actually have the ability to take criteria from the payload of the event and match against it to do that, that logic that everyone was talking about, that decision making to decide whether or not the event that's come in really is actionable. So if we take a look at the action, So this over here is the definition of the evacuate compute workflow, if you will. What it basically does is it takes a bunch of atomic actions that we've defined within our system, just small units of things like getting a list of instances or sending out an email, and it stitches them together into a workflow with conditional logic based off of you know, on success and on failure states for those actions. Um, the beauty of the workflow is that it allows you to, to bubble up that logic and, and, and that entire workflow out of your scripts. This is something that would normally exist within an operation engineer's script or something like that, but we're going to take that out of it and use the Mistral workflow engine to actually, to actually perform all these tasks with the, the ability to exit on error. Um, so if we take a look over here at the history, we can actually see one of these I ran. Um, so this is, the, this is the workflow that I ran here. And we can actually see all of those steps that ran for the workflow. So what it did was it went and it ran and it got the list of instances for the failing compute node. Um, and if we actually look, we can see the payload of that trigger that came from the Sensu alert is here. And so it tells me that it's compute2 that was failing. Uh, it tells me that the tiddly bit is actually the piece of hardware that was failing. Uh, and, and it goes ahead and tells me that the state was critical. So this is the, the input that was given to the workflow. And so it went and it took that, that input and it passed it on through to the actions. 
And so we can see that this action, the first one that ran, was going and getting the list of instances that were running on the Compute2 node. Um, and so it passed in the host name of Compute2. And then we can see down here the actual output of that particular action. As we go through the list of, of actions, we then went and got the, the owners of each one of those instances that was on that Compute node. Um, we sent out a batch mail to all of those owners saying there's been a problem on the underlying node or on, or on the underlying compute node and we're going to evacuate your, your guest to a, another node. We then disabled the compute service on that node, did the migration for the, the instances, and then we confirmed that the migration was successful. Um, so it, goes through the entire process of doing all this. And an additional step that you could add in here is something like submitting a JIRA ticket to replace the, the failing piece of hardware that the tiddly bit in this case that you had been notified of by the Sensu alert. So you're able to tie together all of these actions that are both inside and outside of OpenStack. Like the batch mail was just a send mail command. Um, that's not something that's inherently part of OpenStack, but you can stitch that together into the workflow. Um, The nice thing about this is that this is all done automatically for you, but you don't have to have the automatic remediation done. You could have just the diagnostic work done where it goes and looks at information about the failing node and then spits that out into a collaborative fashion. It's, 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 the workflow is very flexible in how you go about it. We also ship here with a full command line client. So the command line client, just like the OpenStack command line clients, uh, has Python bindings. So if you want to have meta automation and wrap your automation in automations, you could potentially do that. Um, but you can see here the action list, which is the same as I was showing through the UI before, or the rule list. Or actually, there's that full history like we had looked at, all just available through the command line. And there you can see just the specific information returned from, a specific, from, from an execution result. So. so in the, in the title, um, we talked about Amazon and OpenStack. And you, you might ask, why, why are we talking about AWS at an OpenStack event? Well, part of the power of this kind of solution and by the way, we didn't come up with this idea per se. A lot of the larger operators have written something like this themselves. Um, is that you're now abstracting away your logic, so this remediation path, from the underlying which cloud is it. So StackStorm, we also help sponsor a project called LibCloud and contribute pretty heavily to that project. And so while OpenStack is where our roots are, the same logic can be easily applied to AWS, or the combination of the two, or Rackspace, or Name Your Cloud, uh, we very likely already have that integration. So just, uh, again, part of the value here is being able to share these operational patterns, irrespective of whether you have this or that uh, particular cloud or set of uh, infrastructure underneath. Yeah, it's a very... <laughs> Yeah, it's a very good point, Evan. It's, it's completely agnostic is kind of the idea. We've made it very simple to add in the, the integrations, both from the action side and from the event side. And so whether it's OpenStack or another cloud or, or you use Nagios or you use Sensu, it's very easy to integrate any one of those tools into the system. And it, on top of this, you get the full audit history across all of those tools, which isn't something that you're normally going to get when you're just scripting things together. Um, we just recently open sourced yesterday. Uh, so we open sourced our code, but we also open sourced our contribution repo, our, our integration packs. And so what we're really looking to do is we'd like to get people out there to try this out, download it, play with it, um, see what, what integration packs do you think that are, we need, or what integration packs would you like to write? Um, write those and then submit a pull request to us and, and, and we'll pull it into our repo or, or send us a link to the repo where you've put your integration pack and we'll publicize it and you know, put it out on our blog or our site and, and really get it out there and let people know that these other integrations are out there. Because we, we really want to get 
on top of the integrations we've written, we want to be able to integrate with, with just about anything. And we've, we've made it easy to write that. We just want to see people get out there and write it. So, so what questions do you have? Um, a lot of power, I think. Obviously, I'm biased. But, uh, and the demo is pretty simple, right? I mean, we're just showing you how to tie events into actions you can take. We've shown you that remediation uh, use case we're also using CI, CD, so let, let's say the event comes from Jenkins. You can imagine you have a whole series of events that you might want to take in a workflow-like way with conditional logic in between them. Uh, we have audit underneath, as you said, Patrick, so that the whole thing's tied together so you can learn. Um, and you're seeing, I mean, we're just showing you GitHub, but you're now literally sharing infrastructure as code-like your operational patterns. But what questions? Any, any questions come to mind? What is it you do? No. Vlad. Uh, thank you. you want to answer? Or? Yeah. Yeah, so that very good question. So the question was, if you have existing operational scripts and you want to use them in the system, uh, can you use them in the system? And yes, you can. I any script can be added. Uh, it's run remotely over SSH, so we can run anything that can be run remotely on those hosts. You add the actions just by simply writing a five-line JSON file that defines the name and the description, path to the script, and the parameters. Um, incidentally, we also have a a utility that we wrote that will consume fab files from Fabric, and it will actually take all of the Fabric tasks and auto-generate the metadata for each one of those tasks so that you can add each one of those tasks as an individual action into the system without having to write those JSON files. Yeah, so we're not saying throw out your scripts. We're saying it may be getting to be a little bit of a headache to maintain all of these. You have, you know, five, six, ten packages underneath that you're integrating to. That's 25 to 100 different integrations. You have who knows how many scripts authored by who knows how many people. Um, do you want to spend your time maintaining those integrations and those scripts or actually adding business value? Let us ingest those scripts. It's an open source project. You get all the integrations from the community for free. You get the rules engine for free. You get the workflow, the audit, et cetera, GUIs for free. And now you can focus on more high uh, value added stuff as opposed to thinking now, how did we write that script? Who, what happened to the guy who wrote that script, et cetera? So it's really uh, hopefully removing some of the technical debt at the automation layer. Other questions? Yes. So what, what's it like to integrate a, a legacy or an existing system? So it, it really depends. So out of the box, we ship with, the, with a generic webhook sensor. Um, we also ship with a timer sensor where you can fire things on a timer interval. But we ship with a generic webhook. So if whatever your legacy system has the ability to send out an event, you can send it to that webhook. But if that's not something that you can do, if it's more where you would have to reach out and gather that data, We've made the sensor interface also very easy to write. Um, currently, they can only be written in Python, but it is very easy to write the sensor. So the sensor would run on the system, and it would reach out to those legacy apps polling for that data. And then if the sensor decided it was appropriate, it would emit the trigger into the system, which would then go through the rules engine, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I mean, one of the, Evan kind of touched on it, but one of the important aspects that I really see to this is that it does abstract away the actual workflow and the actual procedures that you're going through to do these things away from the underlying code that needs to be 
use to run those. So you can actually take and you can start to version control and, and, and iterate across the procedures, the workflows themselves, and decide how better to streamline your process um, by using something like this and, and having the workflow engine in place. And so I think that, that that's one of the really important aspects that, that kind of bubbles up out of this. Once you've, once you've already tied in the integrations and you start to use it, you start to realize how you can really improve those processes. Yeah, just a quick point on that is if you compare us to a solution like Microsoft System Center Orchestrator, and that, that's a solution we know pretty well because our, my co-founder uh, ran engineering at the company that Microsoft bought uh, for that product, or any of the legacy automation solutions, they don't do what Patrick just said. They don't allow you to easily externalize as code your procedures. They take them in, but they won't give them back. Uh, additionally, same idea on the integrations. Very hard to uh, share those as code. Uh, and then they themselves, the legacy automation solutions, aren't very automatable. They just don't fit in today's world of uh, loosely coupled tools tied together. Question, yep. You get that? Yep. So the So the, the, like an action you're talking about, if an action is performed? So the action scripts are actually copied out, and any libraries that are required for the action script is copied out with that action script. It's then ran on the remote host and then removed. So you don't actually have to have those living, you don't have to have a copy of your repo. Yeah, exactly. Because not every action pertains to every host, right? So, so it, we just copy out the bits that are necessary for that particular invocation of that action, and then we remove it at the end. Any other questions? Yeah, so, well, Mistral is the workflow engine behind what we're using. We actually heavily utilize Mistral, and that's why we've contributed as much as we do to Mistral. But uh, when you really look at the full-blown audit and you look at the, the power of the rules engine here um, and, and how easily the, the sensors are written and, and the incoming events is done, that's where all the power is. Mistral is, is very good at the, the workflow piece, and that's why we leverage it here. But, but it, when you talk about the audit and the rules engine and all that, that's really what, what we're bringing to the, to the table. And, and all the, the rich integrations. That's the other thing, too, is that out of the box, Mistral's not going to ship with rich integration with the... Uh, you know, third-party utilities outside of the OpenStack projects. So we'd love to chat with you more. Uh, booth E2. Also, you can go to stackstorm.com slash community. You know, grab the bits now. I said that at the beginning. So by now, somebody should have grabbed the bits. And I did, any pull requests uh, yeah, in the last uh, I, 10 I minutes? Expect, I, mean, I expect to see pull requests when I get back to, uh, get back to the booth. So I hope so, you guys have written your integrations already. So seriously, we're an op open source um, company, open source project, really excited to help uh, deal with this. Uh, really, it's starting to be technical debt at the automation layer. And, uh, but we need to all kind of pitch in. And, and uh, we're there to help. But we think the integrations and even the operational patterns as code, sharing those, it's going to help us all uh, move faster. Uh, so thank you. you know, th thanks for your attention. Yeah, and please feel free to reach out, uh, pound Stackstorm on Freenode yeah. or, or uh, any, any one of these ways. Just reach out to us. And if you have questions or, or feedback or you just want to chat about the ideas, I'm, I'm always there and I, I love to chat. So thank you. Thank you.